Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with some more Immortal Empires gameplay, this time looking towards Vorkmar the Grim, a very early DLC lord from Warhammer 1 which has finally got in a bit of a facelift and he has his own faction now, so... Yeah, more replayability, which is always good. So this has been very anticipated by a lot of people, mostly because Volkmar is a very, very cool character, very loved in the lore, and yeah, he needed a bit of a facelift. So now, instead of starting in Reichland alongside Karl Franz, you get him in the territories of Suddenburg. This is deep within the Southlands, actually more or less around the middle. So you have a lot of enemies here. Keep in mind that the Southlands has now been turned into some sort of Thunderdome. So you've got demons, you've got Skaven, you've got Lizardmen. Hell, you've got a lot of different enemies that you're going to be able to fight. So let's talk about the campaign and show you the new experience. So obviously first we need to talk about his faction effects known as the Cult of Sigmar. So this is also his faction name too. Volkmar is able to collect and seal the books of Nagash, increasing his military prowess and preventing them from being exploited by others. We know this mechanic very well if you're used to the Tomb King stuff, but there's a bit more to it as we go through. Next is Hero Recruit Rank plus 4 for Witch Hunters and Warrior Priests. You will start off with a Witch Hunter and unfortunately he doesn't have the plus 4. I'm not sure if that's a bug or not but I've already reported that to Creative Assembly just in case. Then Bonus versus Infantry plus 8 for Flagellants, Empire Knights and free Company Militia Units. And finally the cooldown minus 33% to Battle Prayers and Accusation. Very useful considering that you're going to be needing that. Anyways, as it works, you know, you're suitable to climates that you're not really too used to with the Empire, so you'll be able to settle in deserts, even some jungle territories too, which isn't too bad. Keep in mind that you're going to be fighting a lot in territories such as that, so you're going to need every little bit that you can get. Volkmar's own personal trait, Grand Theogenist, has the following benefits. Control plus 4 for local province. This is going to be very useful as you start expanding, as you're going to be dealing with a lot of vampires and skaven and even some chaos, so it's going to help. Physical resistance plus 10% for flagellants, empire knights and free company militia for lord's army. And melee defense plus 8 for flagellants, empire knights and free company militia units once again lord's army. These are going to be the units that you're going to be kind of used to. So we're going to talk about the Books of Nagash mechanic. Now, if you've played the Tomb Kings before in Warhammer 2, you're very much familiar with this mechanic. However, I am aware that there's people who haven't played them, or... Yeah, you just don't remember because it might have been a while. So you've got to get access to books. And for this, you need to go to different locations to then either fight an army, take over a settlement. It very much depends on the book itself, with then each book having its own specific bonuses towards your faction. So we're going to go over all of them right now. So book one gives you Righteous Zeal plus one. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Research rate plus 10% and income from post-battle loot plus 10% faction wide. Obviously, these are very good benefits. And all you need to do for this one is fight a Lord's Army. Now, keep in mind that that's in Lustria. So if you want to beeline for it, that's fine. These can move around as far as I'm aware, so you can just hunt them down, but you already know where they're going to be because this map tells you everything. Book 2 in itself is pretty good, so for this you need to capture Lemire, which is a big territory, but it's not too far away. It'll give you Righteous Zeal plus 1, once again we'll talk about that later. Winds of Magic cost minus 10% for all spells, very very useful as you do have access to a lot of spellcasters. And finally, Miscast Base Chance minus 15% for all armies, very 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 useful. Book 3 will once again need you to take over a settlement, that's Karak 8 Peaks, and it will provide Righteous Zeal plus 1, Hero Action Success Chance plus 10% for Warrior Priests and Witch Hunters, Hero Action Cost minus 25% for Warrior Priests and Witch Hunters, Again, these aren't really too useful unless you actually use them quite actively, but I use them in combat a lot. And then finally, which I quite like, is Hero Capacity plus 1 for Warrior Priests and Witch Hunters. Book 4 will require Skaven Blight, which will also give you the following benefits. Righteous Zeal plus 1, Enemy Hero Action Success Chance minus 10% for all characters, quite a useful bonus. And finally, Casualty Replenishment plus 8% for all armies will be quite useful in all honesty as you start making your way up north and you start taking over loads of territories, getting into loads of combat. 
it's a pretty good bonus. Book 5 will require you to fight an army and the bonuses are Righteous Zeal plus 1, Experience Gain plus 20% for Lords and Heroes, a massive bonus, that's for sure, and finally Character Experience per turn plus 100 for all characters. Once again, this is really really good, especially if you're going to start having multiple armies. I've been playing a lot of Immortal Empires lately and I've seen quite a need for multiple armies, that's for sure. Book 6 will require the White Tower of Hoeth, and then the bonuses are Righteous Zeal plus 1, causes attrition to enemy armies within your territory, very very useful, especially as you start dealing with the Chaos Waste to the north, at least I found it useful, and immune to attrition. All in all, very very good bonuses. And there's a reason to go and take that, you know? You just have to occupy the settlement and take possession of the book. Book 7 will require you to defeat an enemy army, and this will give you the following benefits. Righteous Seal plus 1, Hero Recruit Rank plus 5 for Witch Hunters and Warrior Priests. Extremely useful, especially if you want some support with all the Warrior Priests, which I've generally been wanting. Hero Recruitment costs minus 50% for Warrior Priests and Witch Hunters. And finally, a massive cooldown reduction of minus 25% to battle prayers. Again, very, very good. Something that you definitely, definitely need. And book eight will also require you to defeat a army. It's nothing too difficult, depending on your difficulty and obviously what you have. The benefits are as follows. Righteous Zeal plus one, leadership plus eight for all armies, melee attack plus eight for all armies, and finally melee defense plus eight for all armies. You get quite a lot of bonuses here and you're gonna want this because, well, you know, you want stronger troops. and. Who doesn't? Now, there's a bit more to this mechanic. So as you get the books, you get zeal as you are aware, and what that does is it then fills out a little bar here, which grants very powerful auxiliaries. These are stuff that you're already used to when playing as the Empire because they're elect account stuff. It also unlocks the state troops, which again, something that you do want because it's a, basically another version of a Regiment of Renown. And as you start getting more and more books, you'll also get the upkeep for them reduced. So as you start expanding, it's much, much better. I believe it's all the way up to minus 70%. And it also then starts getting extra bonuses like increasing ward save for all characters. You definitely want something like this as, well, you know, stronger troops, being able to recruit a second version of a Regiment Renown, just in case you need to pop out an army really, really quickly, making them very, very cheap, makes them a very efficient defensive army. Auxiliaries is also going to be very beneficial to you as they're powerful weapons that you can get and just give them to your heroes, your characters, all that type of stuff. So all in all, very good, and it doesn't really take too long. If you focus to go for those areas, you'll get them quite quickly, but that also depends on just how your gameplay works and how your campaign is going in general. Anyways, in terms of generic gameplay, if you're used to Volkmar or if you've been playing a lot of the Empire in Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2, mostly Warhammer 2 because of the rework, then you're not really going to have any issues here. This is still going to be the Empire that you know, just in a very different location and without the Elector Count mechanic, no prestige. It's just a small change there. What you will notice is that you're going to have to fight a lot of enemies that you generally don't fight early into your Empire campaign. So you're going to be fighting a lot of Tomb Kings. There's lizard men in this area which can go hostile. This also depends on your difficulty. Lower difficulties, not so much. You will be able to become quite friendly with them. But it's mostly, in general, Tomb Kings, Demons, Scarbrand is going to be an issue. There's Skaven, there's Greenskins, those ones you're going to be quite used to anyway. A lot of Ogres too, but keep in mind that you do have a decent amount of anti-large stuff, so you won't really have too many issues. I've quite liked how everything's been going, and really the only thing that does become a little bit of an annoyance, if anything, is the settlements. Some of the settlement maps are very repetitive, mostly because the Tomb Kings and a lot of other factions don't have a lot of variety, and I'm assuming that that will get fixed in the future. I really hope so, at least, because we are still in a beta form. But if you're used to the Empire, well, you're not really going to have any issues whatsoever, I'd say, as the mechanic doesn't change the playstyle radically, it only just kind of enhances it a little bit. The only real enemy at the very beginning of your campaign is likely to be Manfred, and you can see here it's turn 3, he's already got a full 20 stack, well, close to. The units will vary, especially as the Vampire Counts have received a bit 
of a rework that should have already been shown on this channel already if not it should be the next video keep in mind that i'm recording stuff early in trying to make sure I get a schedule sorted. But it is very important to note that the only faction that you start at war with is also the enemy of Manfred, so you're going to have to work quickly or else Manfred is going to take those territories too. It's very much a race at the very start, and then you've got all the other enemies there too, so it depends on how you're going to play. The footage I am showing is recorded in normal normal, as when I'm testing stuff out I like to have an easier difficulty. You can see here that he was going straight for that area, but I did manage to snipe it right before he did, and this is turn 5, so obviously fighting him off and getting rid of him is going to be quite useful. He does start off with a capital city also, so he's going to have a strong garrison. If you can get him outside, it's probably the best. In harder difficulties, he will recruit more forces, and obviously early on, it's not too much of an issue. It's just loads of zombies and skeletons and stuff like that. But it can become an issue, because Manfred himself is a very, very strong fighter. Like, he was only around level 5, and Volkmar himself was around level 10-ish or so, and I was still having some issues fighting. But all in all, taking him out very early is going to be quite beneficial for your campaign, I must say, as it does make it a little bit easier not having to stress about a very possibly large growing threat if you leave it unattended. Now, also for Volkmar, because I know people have been asking about this, you just get the quest triggers, by the way. It's not like, go raid Kislev again, which was really silly. So this is going to be for both quests as far as I've seen. You just get the trigger, which you can teleport. You don't have to physically go there, as you're aware, though new players might not be aware of that. So you can unlock your items without too much of an issue. And this is going to be quite good, as we know that the regeneration item itself is very, very useful. And you're going to need it, trust me. It's going to be something that you're going to want to try and get as soon as you find yourself with some free time. Usually after you've dealt with Manfred, which I've taken him out by turn 6, and I think it's easier to do. You could probably take him out by turn 4 if you beeline correctly, but hey, that depends on your player skill. Taking out Cetra will also be quite a valuable move, but that will also depend on how you play. There's one thing that you do need to notice that you've probably already seen on screen. Scarbrand does expand. I've been playing a few times, and he does seem to expand quite well. I'm not too sure if that's something that is going to keep on the live build. They might actually nerf that. But uh, yeah, he does become a little bit of a problem. And uh, your regeneration will not do so well versus that. You know that. He does also become quite the bother considering that his roster is now a lot larger. You know that the DLC units, the Warriors of Corn are available to him so he does have a larger arsenal of troops so you might want to keep an eye on him when you do start playing. So I'm just going to give you some general thoughts on Volkmar's new campaign. I managed to play around 120 turns or so. This is in a different recording and that was in very hard very hard so I'm obviously very used to the Empire and uh, the map that you're showing is just me taking out Cetra. I had a very good fight where the reinforcements were kind of coming through a very small location so I could just kind of bog them down. My uh, mortar was just doing a lot of damage. It's actually quite fun. But yeah, Volkmar, yeah, he's good. I actually quite like this. It's, uh, it's a different campaign to what you're normally used to. It's so radically different to your normal starts where in most cases you wouldn't really start as Volkmar anyway. You'd start as Franz. So it's nice to have another Empire leader, another Legendary Lord in another location, just to kind of shake things up a lot. Especially since the Empire right now, that's turning it into its own kind of dog pile with Festus there already. But yeah, I wanted to have a little bit of a focus on the Southlands Thunderdome, and I figured that Volkmar would be the best because Volkmar was a character that desperately needed some flavor, and I think that giving you an incentive to go around the world is actually really fun. It's going to make sure that you're, you know, active, and it's something that's kind of needed for a DLC character which we paid for, that keep in mind that Volkmar was DLC, but really didn't have anything to just set him apart. Yes, these are Tomb King mechanics, but I'm a big fan of reusing mechanics if at least it makes sense. Law-wise, something like this is entirely possible, so I don't think there's really too much of an issue here. Having a large variety of different enemies because of the Thunderdome itself is fairly enjoyable, at least from something that I've been going through, and I think that it's going to provide Empire players with a reason not to always play as Carl Franz, 
That's just a, an opinion, really. Again, if you're used to the Empire, then you're not really going to have a problem here. Let me know what you guys think about Volkmar now in the comments below. We'll start a bit of a discussion. I'm rather curious to see what you guys think, because I know it was quite anticipated ever since it was announced in a blog a few weeks ago. So, yeah. And I'll see you all again very, very soon. As you can imagine, there are loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of videos coming out for the next few days.